Right, hi all. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Ryan Conlon. Um, Ryan and myself met back in Chemical Croaks back from we were probably five or six. We've kept um, in contact through social media. Ryan's a big advocate on digital marketing and um, I'd like to welcome Ryan. Ryan, hey, uh, how, how are you getting on? How's the forum? Good, good. Just, just finishing up with, uh, with my second semester there in a, a master's program um in digital marketing so just finishing up there and uh yeah it's good to take these few days now to rest before i move on to uh we're doing a company project now next semester so, so let's go take these few couple of days okay so you, you spoke a lot about you know digital marketing and and the benefits of digital marketing and you you're nearly building a personal brand yourself do you want to go into more detail on how you started yeah yeah definitely so um so I really saw the value or how I got to the value of social media marketing was when I was in the fitness industry. So a few years back, I've been in, I was in the fitness industry and I was training clients and I was, I had a book of about um, 40 odd clients, personal training uh, in the CrossFit space. And I was looking to get my message out to, to talk to them all at once. Cause I kept on getting questions on, Oh, what's about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I was like, look, I'll just create a Facebook group. And I'll post a video in the Facebook group. It'll be private on YouTube. And then my clients will get to hear it. And they found it really helpful. Then one of my clients is one day was like, oh, you should post that up online. And I was like, geez, I don't know about that. Um, and especially being from uh, Ireland and Dublin, you do get ridiculed potentially when you put yourself out in line. And there is this big fear with putting mm -hmm. yourself out in line. I was like, geez, I don't know. You know what I mean? And the fitness industry wasn't as big back then. So I post the video online and, and I got a small bit of traction. Not many people watched it, but um, the people that did watch it found it really helpful. So I, I, uh, I got a lot from that, and then I kept posting, kept posting. And then I took some time away from the fitness industry, and then ever since then, I've been just changing over into different topics uh, and talking about things I'm interested in online. And I found that it's been very helpful to bring in opportunities, to bring in, uh, bring in contacts that I never would have met before. So it's... It, I've, I've managed to see the power of social media from the standpoint of getting clients or from a standpoint of just creating more opportunities for myself in different ways, in different industries. Um, and I think it's a really beneficial and cheap way because I haven't spent really any money on mm. social media or digital marketing. So it's a really effective way of, uh, of doing that. And so that's a really, really interesting point that you've just nearly documented a journey and you're, you've kind of evolved from fitness into where you are now in your studies. And, and throughout that, you've, you've, you've engaged an audience um, and kind of brings it on to, you know, why personal branding is, is, is important. And what, what are your thoughts on, you know, how important is it for businesses, but not only businesses, but for individuals who are working in, in companies? Yeah, so I think I think personal branding it's a, it's really thrown around these days, and it's really weird. You know what I mean? Because it's like personal branding almost sounds like this facade you have to put on online to pretend mm -hmm. that you're someone you are. You see it all these days. You see it like the likes of um, the likes of these people uh, online. You just look at them. You're like you're just not like that in person. Like that's just yeah. <laughs> what you're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 it's and it's very and it's it's realistic. It's just it's just producing um it's really your backstory and it's just really producing content and what you want to talk about on a daily basis to uh, uh on a platform online with multiple people and then you you attract those people because you're both interested in the same thing and it's a two-way dialogue and it's a conversation and just another way of creating a network and i think i think the value of it for me personally because i can't speak it on on other people's behalf but the value of it really is is the opportunities it can potentially bring and mm. the minimal amount of time I, I think there was i can't remember the the, the book but, but there's a set there's a sales book i don't know who's by but but back in the day uh, they were like you should at least be spending a minimum of 30 minutes to an hour a day taking that time away from prospecting to just focus on creating content online because and that really stuck with me because since i've been doing that it literally takes 30 minutes a day maybe an hour a day to put something up create something online and I've learned from over time, people really do business with people they, they know or, or like. And the only way to build that awareness is through putting yourself out online. And I think that that brings on to how we connected through this. There's a lot of commonality in what I see you putting out online, which leaves it in the feed. And then I'm like, right, well, he's interested in a lot of, a lot of similar stuff to I am. So let's, 
why not get on? And, and that's why I got you on, because it's like this guy's putting out a lot of interesting, and, and, I, and I, I wrote it down there. It was like prior to this whole, and I'm not going to say, you know, go into the coronavirus, but like there was this scarcity mindset of, you know, giving away too much information. And since this happened, for some reason, everyone's just thrown it out. Like LinkedIn <laughs> yeah. is like the amount of tools and the amount of, of LinkedIn, Instagram, you know, there's guides being thrown around. I feel for whatever reason, the fact that people are in lockdown, but I feel like they've just opened up, they're opening up their playbook. And it's, and it's, it, I think the, the main mission I'm trying to do on this is would be like, give people the information, especially, you know, I'm, I'm talking to my dad on a daily basis. He doesn't know what social media is, nor does he have a channel or anything along those lines. So I think it, it is a case of, you know, those daily routines of doing it for 30 minutes. I've wrote down like when I want to post, you know, now we do fall off bandwagon every, every now and then, but going on to your daily routines, how are you juggling? You know, you've obviously got a lot of college work, you know, you've got projects on your hands. How are you, you know, what does your daily routine look like? Yeah. So I actually struggled quite a lot with this when I was transitioning from the fitness industry into a, into a, back into a college system or back into a, um, uh, sort of a nine-ish to five, nine to six routine because I was training. Obviously, people want to exercise and train at times where they're not in work, so it's usually from the morning or late in the evening. So my time schedule, work schedule, was completely different. So I've had to learn to transition back into doing a nine to five routine, and that was pretty tricky at the start because I had these habits of getting up early, so I time in the morning, or uh, I had these habits of um taking naps in the middle of the day so I could get changed that up and Guilty. so yeah yeah no no it's it's what you have to do when you're doing long days um, and, not, and not much rest so what I've been trying to implement is um just just when I started I started to read more essentially when I got out of in the fitness industry and I've been slowly implementing things that have been working that haven't been working for me and um and yeah I've been created like I suppose like a little routine for myself when I've made, obviously there's a lot of different tactics you can do for productivity, but, um, but something really effective is like just get up in the morning. I'll, I'll listen to, I'll do my hardest thing first. So whether that's, for example, going to the gym or producing a bit of content or, or reading a book, just doing something in the morning where I have some free time. So at the end of the day, I don't think about it because work can get in the way or, mm. or, school can get in the way so I, I tend to make a priority of that content creation uh, earlier in the morning so maybe from half eight to nine before I start work uh, that's already just 30 minute window even when I'm commuting it's a 30 minute window where you can look at something create a quick piece of content and then people can see that throughout the, the day and it may not be the best time to post but it's when you can do it and it's when it's the most consistent and that's what matters over time you know it doesn't matter necessarily if it's the right time to post. It's are you just doing it consistently over a long period of time? I think it's what's most important. Brilliant, brilliant point. So this kind of again going on to um, some of your biggest learnings on on social media and marketing. You know, you've obviously you've obviously studied it in depth. I, I can tell by talking to you and what you're putting out that you know you've got an, a massive interest in it. What are your biggest learnings in the field? Yeah. So with regards to, so with regards to the personal branding side of the digital marketing, what I'd say is it's two massive things that I've learned. Um, and I haven't, I don't know everything, but two things that I've learned is you don't have to have a niche or you don't have to be an expert to start talking to the world. I think there's this big thing where I think it as well as like, Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll talk about this. I'm not an expert on it. Like I don't have a master's in psychology. I don't like, I'm not an expert in, pro pro in productivity, but I want to talk about what I'm doing. And hopefully, like you said, that will bring value to someone because everyone's just learning. Like no one's really an expert in anything. You know what I mean? Well, maybe in certain cases, like you have to have expertise when you're charging a service. Uh, but I'm just giving away free content and talking about it from my perspective. I'm not pretending I'm an expert. So that's one thing is you don't have to be an expert to start. Uh, the second thing regarding personal branding and digital marketing is probably overcoming that fear um, of starting. I think that's a big thing. Um, and it's momentum once you just overcome that fear of putting yourself out there and then it gets very a lot easier to keep keep going but it's that initial momentum so those two things the personal branding side and uh, with regards to digital marketing um, for like different companies and whatnot um, and working on some projects with some some companies the biggest thing I'd say is um, is people don't want to be sold to and people do not care about your business 
people only care about what you can offer them. So it's a great point. When like when you're promoting a message or when, when you're trying to generate leads, instead of thinking of just lead generation and be like, it's a short term exchange of I'm giving you a service and you're giving me money. It's more about demand generation. It's more about your, you want to generate uh, awareness through, especially on online on social media or whatever channel you decide to use. You want to generate awareness or something that resonates with your target audience. And all you should care about is how you can bring value and how you can engage your target audience. Cause they do not care about your business. <laughs> they don't care about mm. what you can sell them. They only care about what you can do for them. So that's what I'd say. It's a great point. And it, one thing I'm always harping on about in the lads in the office will, will be, will, will laugh when they hear this is, is that trying to be relationship based. If you can form more relationships and we we've seen it in croaks, I'd say this, you know, the amount of business that are done in gyms, fitness industries, because people have a common interest and people like yeah. shopping with people you know, like going down to the supermarket, you like going down with someone, one of your mates. It, it, it's the same in, in, with marketing, I believe, is, is that if you're putting out good copy and, you're, and, I, and I'm continuously trying to learn better copy as to how do I attract people? If I can have more relationships, internally, it leads to more business, hopefully. Um, so what, well, last, heard, la like, yeah. Just that point, Ken, I, I completely agree with you. And I heard, I think, I think, I can't remember where it's from, but like, I heard like the biggest reason why people don't do business with someone or a company is due to obscurity of not knowing you, but then they have to trust you as well. And the only way online to build up that trust, like I know in person, like when you go to the gym with a golf course with someone, you can build up that trust and rapport, but the only way to build the trust online is through constantly showing up and being top of mind in someone's newsfeed, creating valuable, interesting content to meet their needs. That's, that's the only way. And, uh, and I think once you, once the, a business or um, like someone getting on social media can understand that it's not about them, it's about their primary target audience. As you said, developing that relationship, the, the faster they'll see results. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really, really strong point. Um, so just talking that about challenges that you've faced and going into, you know, how you might've overcome and I'm not trying to trick you out, but like what, what is the biggest challenge on and you, and you touched off it there and I could see it when you said, um, you know, the fear, because I had that as well. I was like, I'm not going on video. Not a chance of <laughs> putting my face on video. I might do audio. Um, so, you know, what's, what was the biggest challenge you, you faced and how, you, how did you overcome it? Yeah, so I remember talking to, talking to a couple of people about this. Um, I was, so I was putting a video in, in the fitness industry and then I was, I was, people were commenting on it or saying things um, about it and I stopped and I legitimately stopped. I was like, look, I don't want to be a part of this. Like, I don't want, I don't want people to talk about it in that way. I, I'm just going to stop. And it took me about a year and a half to two years to gain up the courage again to put myself out there. And I think that's something really important, especially because um, Ireland and Dublin is such a small place. Everyone kind of knows everyone. So putting yourself out there, people may, maybe, maybe, maybe they don't even care, but maybe one person says a comment to you or something to me and you're like, oh. I think the, the biggest thing is just probably just making the jump and the leap. Um, I remember posting that first video and I told no one, I didn't even tell, I was like, I was like, don't say, I was like, I, I said to my girlfriend, don't say a word, don't tell anyone. I'm just going to put this video out online. And, and I was like shaking, man. I was like, I can't yeah. believe I was like, Oh, this because it's almost like you feel vulnerable. You feel completely stripped down. And, um, but then once you get over that first hump and you feel like no one said anything back, Wait, <laughs> my mm. mates actually think it's pretty okay. They're like, this is crazy. Which, like, I thought I was going to get so much backlash, but then you realize that no one really cares. And when that, like, no one, unless you're doing something absolutely absurd and you're offending people, like if you're, if you're doing something that could potentially be bad, beneficial to someone, no one really cares that much. And, and some people may actually like it, which, and to get out, and, and once you realize that, I think that, 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 that can only come from doing it and experience of actually just jumping and seeing what happens. It's almost like jumping into the 40 foot or jumping into the cold water. Once you do yeah. it, you realize, ah, oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. It's cold. Nine <laughs> times out of 10, you'll be like, I'm going to swim. Or if I've hopefully I've learned to swim, <laughs> but like it, it's, it's all about learning and it's about, you know, adapting anytime you've, I've made mistakes. It's, it's, you, you learn from those mistakes, especially online. Like you might put up a terrible post and doesn't, you know, 
I'd say to, I'd say to people like you're for the first few videos, it's not going to gain massive traction, but as you said, it's, it, it builds up and it starts to grow momentum. You'd be more, more confident. Um, but that's, that's, that's really good. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we touched off it. And to the point, Kenneth, I don't think, I don't think as well, like I wouldn't consider myself to have traction on some platforms. I consider some posts have tractions, but I think people do underestimate I am, I definitely underestimated this it's getting started into digital marketing, even for businesses and even for a, a personal brand and um, is the, 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 the level of not just quality, but the level of quantity you have to create online to be seen or heard, especially on certain platforms these days, because the reach is so low. Like if you have a Facebook page and you're not paying money to get your word out there, but you're just delivering organic content, like the amount of quantity of content you have to create just to get heard and seen by your target audience is a lot. Like it is a lot. So um, in order to get traction, as you said, it's not going to be the first one, two, three, four, five videos. It may even take a year or two years. Mm. It's just about constantly showing up and eventually you'll build that consistency um, and trust with, with an audience. I'll actually remember, I remembered one of your videos you posted on Facebook um, and it was, I think it was, five books you were reading and it just so happened there was a few books that I had also wanted to read or had read. And I think reading is a, a you know, one thing that I, that I've, uh, that I've tried to learn myself to, to do more of and fit it into my schedule each day, maybe do 10, 15 pages. Cause over time it'll add up. Any books you read at the moment that, that you found interesting, maybe marketing books or. Uh, yeah. So uh, books I've read at the moment, she's off the top of my head and uh, there's a great book. Um, when I kind of transitioned into the, the more nine to five, I, I, I kept feeling like I could do a load of things at once. And I, I read a book recently this year, two books, um, one sort of half read um, is called Essentialism. I think it's Greg McGowan, Greg McGowan. And basically what the whole message of the book is, and I, I'm not doing it justice, just saying it has one message, but it's basically saying um, most of the things that we do don't really matter. And it's how to become an essentialist. How, how do you, how do you realize exactly what you should be doing or how do you stop being overwhelmed so that's a really great book that i've read uh, and it's really helped me to figure out i'm actually doing a lot of things that i shouldn't be doing and i should mm. just be focusing on a few things so that that's a great read um and another one um is i think it's the and um, the power of big thinking or the power of thinking big and i know it kind of gives it away and i know it's kind of people do cringe and i kind of cringe as well at some of the self-help titles to try to sell books mm. But if you can get past the title of that book, particularly uh, some of the content in there about um, how just your thought process and whatnot is really phenomenal because um, I, I used to hate reading and getting into reading, it was like so much pain for me. So it's reading like a page or five pages a day um, of those two books this year specifically was, uh, yeah, they've been brilliant and applying them really good. Brilliant. Okay, well, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to take any more of your time. Uh, thanks again for coming on. Uh, no, oh, good, Kev. Hopefully it was uh, helpful and not all just speaking about random things. No, it was it's brilliant. It was good. The people the property sector. Yeah, absolutely. So, listen, guys, I'm going to put Ryan's details in the comments, and uh, I'm sure you can reach out to him or connect with him um, and see what he's creating. Yeah, feel um, free to send me a message at any time if you want. If you want, uh, um, if I can help in any way with regards to social media, digital marketing, or personal branding just drop me a message on any platform brilliant perfect